All right. Already. Okay, there we go. So again, thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. This is an immersive workshop. Uh, we are going to answer your questions. So some of you may have had questions already when you were completing the first part of your, your Common Application, the Common App tab. Shanley and Kate are with me today, and they'll be answering those questions for you and throughout the workshop. So anytime you have a question about the applications, please post it there. If you have questions about other parts of your applications, like should I ED or EA, and um, I want to review my college list or my college supplements, that's something to bring up with us later. Today, we're just focusing on the common apps, but feel free to send any questions you have to hello at Fahey Associates. And I have posted that email in the chat for your reference. Um, so the first thing we'll do, and I'm just going to check here, do we have many questions going up, Shanley and Kate, or can we dive in? Um, we can dive in. Um, we have one open question, but I think we'll cover it um, when we get to the um, courses section. Okay, great. Fantastic. So um, again, I'd like you all to share your screen in the following manner. I'm just going to um, show you um, what I'd like you to do here. Um, you should have your uh, screen side by side. So here, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen if I wasn't already. Um, here it is. So you want to have your common app open either on the left or the right, and then the share screen open on the left or the right. So side by side in whichever way works best for you. Um, and we'll go ahead and jump in. So I'm going to be sharing uh, my common app screen now, and we'll be going through this somewhat um, in yoga style um, at a kind of medium pace to make sure that we're taking everyone with us throughout. So um, again, if you have any questions as we're working through the Common App, please don't hesitate to ask them. So the first thing we're going to have you do today, if you haven't done this already, is add your colleges. Um, and you do this by going into the College Search tab. Um, that's the, the third or fourth tab up here. Um, and you'll just put in, there are a couple ways you can do this. You, uh, usually we just have students put in the name of the school. So let's say that I'm looking for Bates College. Um, I go ahead and search it and it comes up. Sometimes maybe you're applying to a state school and you know there are a bunch of state schools. So like if we put in Florida here, um, Florida is going to come up and there's going to be a whole bunch of different schools in Florida. Um, so that kind of a couple things here allows you to identify your school. It also allows you, if you're really keen on going to Florida, to potentially see that there are other schools that you might want to explore. You've got a couple months here before you apply. Um, so go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back to the Bates here. Um, and then once you've um, you found your college, you're going to go ahead and add it. And that will basically add it to this My Colleges tab. So you can see here I added Bates and it showed up. And when, once you've done this, then your entire college list should show up here, right? So for today, we're trying to help you to get the 10 colleges, kind of core colleges that you're doing with us. Um, try to focus on those first, and then you can add any additional colleges you want. Um, as you go, uh, but if you have many additional colleges and you might want to hold off today just to try to, or add them once you've made some progress on completing the applications. But the, the idea is to get the, that core of 10 colleges done as soon as possible or today in our workshop, and you'll be sending the PDFs to us later. So, um, going through this, I just want to give you a quick introduction the dashboard tab of this uh, of the Common App is basically here to tell you what the progress of your applications are. So you can see for all of my schools that I have on here, my applications are in progress. Once I've submitted them, they'll show submitted. If there's anything that still needs to be done, it'll post here. Um, so this is this is a nice. Um, you can see there's more details in here. And it gives me a little more information about what's done. So it shows that my Common App tab is done. Um, we're going to be doing this section, which I've already completed here, and that'll show completed on your application today. And then the questions are in progress. So that's the dashboard, and you can you can always use that. 
most of the time you're going to be toggling between the My Colleges tab and the Common App tab. Those are the two that you're going to be using the most. Once you've pulled your college search tab, you probably won't be using that so much unless um, you're looking to add some colleges at some point um, later in the semester. So um, go ahead. We're going to give you, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes here to go ahead and uh, add your colleges. Once you're done, if you could raise your hand, that allows us to see where you are. And then we're going to step into the more tedious task of looking at what's inside of each college. So go ahead and um, do that search. Go ahead and search for each college and then add it to the list, add it to the My Colleges tab. Um, and if you're um, sitting there, um, you can also post any questions you have, if this is a good time as well, post any questions to Shanley and Kate, um, anything that's come up or anything on the application that you weren't sure about. It looks like everybody, um, for the most part, really understood the, the application so far. So that's great. We didn't have too many questions during the week either. So that's really fantastic. We'll take another five minutes as people add their colleges. You'll have time to add them a little later as well. Um, if you're, you know, um, kind of have added your list already, you might want to take a look at the dashboard and poke around and see what it's made out of um, and, and just kind of or open up the, the different colleges and see what you see there in terms of the questions. We'll be walking through all of this, but you can just familiarize yourself with the application a little further.
Okay, if you have four or five applications already on your mic colleges, you can go ahead and raise your hand. That's plenty to get started. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, fantastic. That's all you need for now. You'll have a moment later to um, go ahead and add these in, but I'll just wait until we've got the full number here. Okay, also one thing I wanted to mention is that there are some colleges that you will not find on the Common App. Um, those include Georgetown, um, MIT, they have their own applications, the UCs and the CSUs. So all four of those, um, well, the two California systems and then Georgetown and MIT, um, those are, in, at least in our group, those are the main ones that are not on the Common App. So if you're searching for it in those schools and you're not finding them, it's because you need to go to the website. And we'll be sending you updates about those two applications um, directly. So we're not sending them to everyone. We're just sending them to the people we know that are applying to those schools. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Um, you'll have plenty of time today to continue adding your colleges. I'm going to choose um, to go over a few things in the Common App tab first, and then we'll come back and look at New York University's application. So um, I'm going into the Common App. One of the most common questions we get is about the activities list. Um, you will be, we've asked you to draft your activities in another document because we wanna read over what you've written and the editor in the Common App, it's very hard to do that and edit it. So um, we've had you do that in another document so that we can work with you on the writing, make sure that it's to the right character count before you paste it. But as soon as you've received ROK that you can go ahead and add your activities, you can, you can come in here and start filling this out and adding the descriptive sentences that you worked on with us. So you'll see, uh, the biggest question people have, or the most common question is, what order should I put them in? And basically, you want to put the activities that you've been most committed to at the top and spent the most amount of time in. Those activities that show your leadership, your commitment over a long period of time, maybe an area where you really stand out if you're an athlete or an artist and you've put a lot of time into your um, art, if you are really involved in a group like DECA or MUN or robotics, um, or you're a leader in those groups, and you would want to put that at the top. So it's really where have you been invested the most of your time? And those should really float up to the top so that they can see who you are as a person and how you've committed yourself. Now, once you've put them in here, you may decide to move them around and you can do that with these little buttons. So over in the right, you just move down. Um, so you can see that my activity about community service just went down to activity two and activity two just came up to activity one. If I wanna move it back, I just come back here and say, move up. And now the research activity is two and the mentoring leading tutor um, activity is number one. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, I would put all of the information in here first. Some students are asking, 
should I in include that I'm doing the activity in 12th grade? And um, you basically want to report exactly what you're doing. So if you are doing the, the activity in 12th grade, then you would put it there. You're only going to select postgraduate if you've graduated. And not, to my knowledge, nobody has. Um, but if you have already graduated high school and you're out in a kind of um, transition gap year, then you might mark postgraduate here. And then you're putting the number of hours per week, the weeks per year. Um, this is important to state. You might not be doing a, the exact activity, but if you're planning on doing something similar in college, you should say yes. So what they're trying to assess here is, is this who are you going to be on their campus and what kind of activities will you be doing on their campus? So it's important that you answer this question thoughtfully, like, is this something that I want to do or something like this? Then say yes. Okay, so that's the activities. I'm just going to pause here for a moment and see if there are any questions that have come up. Um, those are the main questions. Yes, Shannon. Uh, Alicia, this will be, I think, when we get into the courses section, but a question on how you enter 12th grade courses if you don't have an official title for the course or if your course title doesn't fit in the field. Okay, great. So um, that's actually on the Common App tab as well. Mm -hmm. Senior courses, and I'm glad you brought that up, they should go in under education. And it says down here, let's see, current or most recent year courses. So those are the courses that you're taking your senior year, right? Because you're applying in the fall, you're a current senior. So these should, you don't have grades for these. So they shouldn't go on your courses and grades. And again, unless you've graduated, but you haven't most likely. So here you're putting in your course load. You basically want to put as much of the title as you can. You can shorten a word if necessary um, in the course name. Just make sure that the most important parts of the title are in the title so that they can recognize what it is. It's okay if you shorten it. And then if it's a full year or semester course, so at many high schools, econ is taught in two different, you have micro and macro. So you would want to indicate it as a half year course, not a full year course. And then most courses like math and English are full year. So this is where you'll be putting this information and you will not be listing grades because you don't have grades yet. So I think that answers that question. Okay. Great. So um, let's go into the um, writing section. And the writing section has something new this year, which is this statement about the requirement of a personal statement. So some schools like Arizona State University do not require you to include a personal statement in your application. However, they allow you to include it and they invite you to include it. And I would say, it's better to include it than not to if you're if you want to kind of make sure that you'll be admitted. I think it adds to the application. So there's no reason not to, especially um, maybe you have, you know, had a, some you were sick or you went through a rough patch in high school. And so your GPA isn't as strong as you'd like. The personal essay gives you the opportunity to write about yourself you might also use the additional statement to talk about how your grades went down. But I would recommend that if any school is allowing you to use your personal statement, that you should include it. All they are asking you to state here is that you understand that some colleges don't require the personal statement and that you will have the option to elect to include it. And all you have to do is say, I understand. So that's kind of a new thing and it might seem a little strange, but that's kind of the large picture of what's going on there. Um, then here you're going to see um, which schools require. So Arizona State does not, right? All these others do. This part you don't need to worry about, but what I would like you to do um, or what you'll need to do if you want to kind of look at the whole, uh, well, we'll see if you need to do this later on. I'm not sure that you did, but you can go ahead and try this. To move through the entire application, you need to complete the writing section. So what I'd like you all to do is copy this paragraph um, and then select 
any question, maybe the question that you think you're answering or that you have answered, and then copy that section three times. And this is just, you're just creating a placeholder so that there you can go through all the doors. So the way the Common App works is that you have to complete some information in order to move on to other sections of the application. So just in case you have a question today and we want to be able to help you and we need to access that part of your application. Let's just everybody go ahead and put in, you know, copy three times so you know it's something that you would never submit because it's instruction. Um, go ahead and copy that. I think it's three times you have to copy it into that box. Um, and then you'll go ahead and hit continue. Um, and then we'll get to the additional information section here. So I'm just going to give everybody a couple minutes there to um, add in the placeholder text, and then we'll move on here. Okay, so this is the additional, oh yeah, great. Everybody can raise their hand. <laughs> there we go. That's fun to watch. I like watching the numbers spiral. Um, the additional information section is very important and your CC will be reading over it carefully and most likely helping you to craft it. Basically, the additional information is anything that should be flagged or anything that will complete your application, right? Now, readers, admission readers are very sensitive about this area. They don't want you to put another essay in here. They don't want you to spend a lot of time describing anything. They're really coming in here expecting to see kind of bullet point alerts. And so this is why it's really important that your CC looks it over. They want to get in here and understand factually what's happened or something that hasn't been included, information that needs to be understood for them to better understand your application. So you want no confusion. You just want it to be straightforward, factual, to the point, short. So that's really important. You might hear otherwise um, or read something else on the internet. We have had people from Penn Admissions, Stanford on my team. We know for sure that you do not want to put anything long in here or anything elaborated. So please rely on your CC. For this first question, this is about COVID and you were you all went through it, right? So it says, do you wish to share anything on this topic? You really only want to add something here if if COVID was particularly disruptive for you. And it might've been, it might've been that you had a family member that your family had to really protect. It could be that somebody was had medical sensitivities. And so unlike your friends who perhaps were out a lot more, you were not. Um, it could be that someone in your family was sick, that you faced very in, um, difficult financial hardship because of COVID. This was a very difficult time for everyone, but you really only want to put something here if your experience was specific, particularly more aggravated than others, or something really difficult and challenging happened that perhaps affected your grades or affected, affected your ability to perform or do other things. So it's not really everybody's lives were, were disrupted. Nobody was able to do their extracurriculars. So you don't need to write about that. But if something exceptional happened, then you might want to include it here. And you should also pass this by your CC just to make sure. Again, what you don't want is a reader to get here and say, well, everybody went through that. Why are you including it? Right. So it really is meant to be something unusual happened um, during COVID for me. Um, and then here, um, this is the section that, I, that is more about academics, and this is the section where we want for sure your CCs to review this with you. Now, things that you can add, and we'll be sending you a handout called the Additional Statement Handout. You don't need to worry about this right now. This will be something that we'll be working on as we go. 
Um, but, and in the CAP family meeting, we'll discuss it. But the kinds of things that you might include here are grades from college courses you took that do not show up on your high school transcript. So many of you have taken college, community college courses that were given credit at your high school and they show up on your high school transcript and you've reported them as part of the courses and grades section. However, a lot of high schools do not uh, include credit for some courses or they've stopped including courses as a part of their transcript and a part of your GPA. So you would need to list those courses here. So you would say, at De Anza, I took philosophy and marketing and um, list the name of the course and the grade that you received because you won't be able to post the grade anywhere else on the application. This is where it goes. Another thing that you would post in additional information is that you did go through medical difficulties or you were sick or injured or something happened that made it very difficult to participate in school, participate in your extracurriculars and your grades went down. So if you have any kind of a dip on your transcript, it needs to be explained here. What the admission reader is going to do, they're going to be looking at your transcript and once they see that dip, they're going to immediately flip to the additional information section and look for an explanation. So this, this part of the application is very much linked to the process of looking at the transcript, right? Who is the student? What's happened for the student? What's their history? And how can I understand their transcript in light of that history? So anything that affected your grades needs to be explained here. Um, it could be that that's under COVID because it happened during COVID. Um, it could be, um, if it's not under COVID, then you would put it here in the additional information. If it's about your grades, it can really be either under COVID or under the broader additional statement, either one. Um, other things that you might include here is a very brief one or 200 word description of the activity that was most important to you. So the activity that you've, like, you want to make sure they understand that this was the activity that was most important to your development as a student, right? So this would be something you can add here. Um, and then that's about it. So there are, if you've done any research and you want to make sure um, that the research is explained here, you do this in a sentence or two. So they don't want a paragraph. It's a sentence or two. I did this research with this professor or at this campus or anything else that you feel really stands out that needs to be highlighted that further, it needs to be highlighted beyond what shows up in your activities. So if your activities explains it enough, right, then leave it there because they don't like duplication. If you feel it's very important to explain, because let's say in your common app activities, you say, I did this research project based on X, Y, Z, that's about all you can say. If you feel it's really important to outline what you did as part of the research team or the work that you accomplished on that team, then you should include it here. And this goes for extracurriculars, any volunteer work where you went above and beyond and you feel that that one sentence really doesn't isn't enough, but it needs to be something where it's really important to include it. And you need to be really prudent here because one thing admissions readers hate is getting to this area and seeing a whole bunch of stuff or seeing that all of the activities have been elaborated on. So you need to choose very carefully. College admissions readers are trying to understand who you are as a student, what it is you bring, what specifically is your particular accomplishment and your particular gift. And if you have a whole bunch of things here, you're just boggling your, their mind and making it more complicated for them to answer that question. So it should be focused. It should be precise and concise. And again, your CC will be looking over this. So that's really important. This is a, a very critical part of the application and will be you know, um, showing you, uh, speaking about this with you one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and we'll also be talking about it with you in the CAP family. Now, it could be that you have very little to stick in this box, and that's fine. Some students have, there's nothing additional that they need, need to add, and they feel that their activity statement is right on point. They've written it really carefully, and they feel that, you know, stating more than what's already provided is going to be 
um, redundant. And so you want to avoid redundancy and repetition. They really don't like it. They're scanning your application and they're trying to make sense of everything. And if they see repetition, it's a bit of a, um, not a setback, but they want to understand why you've given them that information. So that's really important. And if you have any questions about that, definitely bring it or what you should include, um, bring it to the CAP family meeting, send it to us in an email. What do you think about, you know, including this or that to your CC? Okay. So does anybody have any questions there? That, that was a meaty section there. And that's the writing section, right? So what you might do is go ahead and copy um, this space right in here. Well, you either need to say yes or no, right? So, and maybe you did that. Um, so either know that you're not sharing anything about COVID or yes, you are, and then put like I did here, TBD. And then here, yes or no, I am providing something and then put TBD, right? So that'll kind of click this section um, as complete. So as you Felicia, can see, yes, yeah. We did have a question. Okay, um, so a student says that their school is phasing out APs, so their transcript would have fewer APs than other schools. And they wanted to know if that would be appropriate to include in the additional statement. Absolutely, great question. And a lot of changes are happening across high schools right now, everybody. So, and, and the college admissions folks aren't gonna be able to be on top of that. I mean, we, you're barely able to stay on top of it yourselves and parents are just finding out about all these changes. So any changes that have impacted your ability to perform or have changed your curriculum for the better for, you know, either way, the, the elimination of APs for the better or the worse, you need, you should explain that, that you've been taking APs, but your senior year that your high school has done away with them again, very short and that you took fewer APs. However, your curriculum was equally advanced and um, as your senior courses describe, right? So again, keep it short. Don't list out all the courses you're taking. Just say, as you can see in my senior, my list of senior courses, my course load is very um, competitive, right? So there may be particular AP courses that have been eliminated, like AP Lang for English. They don't teach it. Um, maybe you've been able to take honors. Um, some high schools are moving to a completely different format for advanced coursework. I think it's called AC. Um, you might have IB coursework and you feel that something needs to be explained, like an area that you particularly stood out in in your IB curriculum. Um, so if you have any questions about that, really just reach out. So, you know, we'll and we'll let you know. We'll say, yes, that's great. Let's add it or let's talk about it. Let me think about it or let me get back to you or no, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that would be a good idea. Right. So, and again, this is, we've got a couple months, so it's nothing that you need to worry too much about. We just wanna start that conversation now because it will be important to your application. Okay, so any other questions about, that's the writing section. Again, you've got this, you know, you'll be coming back and pasting all of your essays in here, right? So your personal statement is going to go here. Um, your additional short statements are going to go in here. And then we're going to take a look now at the my colleges um, to see where your supplement essays are going to go. But I'll just pause here for a moment and see if anybody has any other questions. And again, we have a handout. We're going to make that available to you. Out, we're we're putting together a handout um, that we'll be sending to you after this boot camp, so that you kind of have the important information that we covered. Um, and then, and any of the links that you need. Um, and then of course the CAP emails are very important and we'll be posting updates as we go, reminding you what's coming up, what you need to do, all of that. All right, sounds like we can move forward. So let's dive into the fun stuff and the Common App really changed this year. We were amazed well, to see all the new questions. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Um, Felicia, I think we have a few questions about the oh, education great. section. Oh, okay, great. Um, so just to clarify in the education section, um, those are supposed to be what level courses, junior or senior year, senior year. So right. again, you're applying as a senior and you're currently, and I know this is confusing because we had you start and you were a rising senior and every single year students put their junior year classes in here. Understandable. 
Um, but you are applying in the fall and you are technically in your senior year. Um, so you want to put your senior uh, classes here. Your junior courses should be going in here under 11th grade, right? Now, 12th grade, you're going to put nothing because you, you have no transcript for 12th grade, right? So this whole section is about your transcript, what's on your transcript only. Um, your 12th grade classes are not on your transcript yet, right? So that's the way to really think about it. And it's sort of the language that the Common App uses. But this is every year we get a little confusion. So I'm really glad somebody brought that up. Um, um, other another question. Um, if the unweighted max is a 4.0, but your weighted max is a 4.5, should you choose a four point grading scale? Yeah, still choose a four point grading scale because you're still on a four point grading scale. You're not on a five point. And there are very few schools that use 5.0, but they're out there. Um, they, and this is a question that often comes up. Some colleges will be recalculating your GPA. Some of them won't, right? So where they don't have the time to recalculate it, they won't. If that's part of their admissions process, they will. It just depends. So it's better to put your weighted, um, your weighted GPA will be used for merit scholarships and things like that. So it's important to show that um, you've you're great that you've you've had grades in advanced. It's basically showing you've had grades in advanced coursework, right? So that's what the weighted is. So 4.0 with a weighted um, GPA. Any other questions? Um, we do have one question about college summer courses. Great. Um, so a student says that they are unable to add more than three college summer courses under education. Um, so where would be the appropriate place to put those? Okay, anytime you don't have space, and again, it should be important, don't make anything up, right? Um, anything, uh, you don't want them to, you don't wanna get flagged, right? If they have a question about something, then it can flag it. So if you've taken, what I'm understanding is the student, you've taken courses at three different, you you listed under education, and let me just go to where that is, um, three different high schools that you went to, right? So in here, you put three, right? And you listed them. So like it could be Lydian, and maybe it was, um, you did a program at Brown, and maybe you did a, a program at Mullenberg or whatever, right? So you, and you can only add three here. So then you would add that to the additional statement. Um, I also attended, you know, these colleges and took these courses and received these grades. Because again, anything that's not on your transcript, unless it's on your transcript, you need to report it somewhere. And the place to do that is the additional statement. So great question. Is that, is that it? Um, and then in the testing section, yes. this is a pretty important question. Should I not click to report SAT scores if I don't want to report them to all colleges? Correct. So let's go over this. This is a section that I was planning to go over anyway. So test taken, um, <clears throat> if you've taken AP, so notice that AP is on here. So this is something that some students don't see. So if you've taken SAT, AP, any of these and you want to report, let's say you're going test optional, but you've taken AP exams, right? Then you still you want to say yes and you want to put uh, subject exams here, right? You will be asked later on inside of the individual exams if you're reporting your SAT, right? But let's just say for now, the only thing you want to report is your APs. Let's say that you don't want to report any scores for anything then here you're going to put no, and then there's nothing to fill out. Okay. So that's how that works. Now, keep in mind, and we're going to get to this later, but I'm just going to bring it up now. Some schools are hiding your exam scores um, as part of their admissions process. I don't quite know what that's about, but they're doing, I guess, kind of test blind. And so when you go to your, to create your PDF, your test scores might not show up there. Just be aware that it's it's just the admissions practice. Not every, some schools it'll show up, 
other schools, those test scores will not show up. So again, and then here, if I'm adding, you know, the, let's say I add the ACT, right? And then it, here it's gonna ask me to report my scores. And let's say I took them two times, right? So, and maybe I have a future score here. I'm gonna take it in 2024. Um, no, wait, what am I saying? 2023, right? 20, <laughs> getting ahead of myself in November, right? And then I put my highest composite. So the highest composite, total composite and the date. And then this is where you're putting the dates of your high the individual score. So it might not, your, your highest English score may not have come from your highest composite exam. Maybe you had a higher score when you took the exam in February and same for the SAT, right? So maybe the math section was higher in another exam um, so that they can super score. Basically, that's what you're doing. So you're listing your highest total and individual scores here for the common app. That's what they want you to do. Okay. So, okay. oh, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. no, that I'm, I was just going to move on, but there might be more questions. This is a tricky section. Yes, there's, this is also for the testing section. So um, a student who took the SAT, um, but there was no essay and saying that it's requiring an essay score when you select SAT, what do they do for the essay score? Okay, that's strange. Let me go in and see what's going on here. So um, let's see, Go. let's go back to test taken. It shouldn't, it should allow you to SAT scores. Um, and we may need to go through and see. So SAT tests. Um, here, you should have this thing that says, would you like to report an essay score? And you should be able to say no. So if I'm answering the question right, it, you might, maybe you read over it, but go ahead and, and take a look at that again. Um, if you're still having trouble, this might be something where a CC needs to get inside the application with you. Uh, to see what happens. Sometimes, sometimes there are glitches in the common app. It happens. Something will be there one day, gone the next. So um, if you're not seeing this question there for some reason. It looks like they can see that now. So, okay, great. Yeah. And, you know, it's really easy to read over these things. I, I catch you're, you're, you will want to go over it carefully. And that's why we're having you start it now. We're going to ask your parents to review it and then we're going to review it because, it's almost like you're applying for, you know, a green card or something like this. You have to do this carefully. Um, and, and the questions can be even the simplest questions can sometimes be confusing or you might not answer them right and you need to go back and check them. So um, that's why we're starting early. Um, and that's why we have kind of multiple checkpoints in the process. All right. Are we good on exams? And then um, actually yes. we have. We have another exam question. Um, so the student is writing, for the ACT, if my highest individual scores for some sections are the same from my highest composite and another test, which should I list it from or does it not matter? It doesn't really matter. If they're the same, you can just list one. And you can send in the scores for both if you want, because it kind of shows like, oh, you took them twice and you did well on both of them. If you want to, it's really up to you when you send in the scores. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but yeah, you don't need to. It's up to you to decide whether you want to list them both um, or not, really. They're and just then, for one. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and then we have a question um, back from the education section, but it's come up a couple of times. If a school doesn't have AP or honors, if a 4.0 is the highest grade you can get, should you put down your 4.0 on weighted GPA? Yes. And you should explain that in your application. My school does not have a weighted GPA. A 4.0 is the highest GPA that I could earn. The rigor of my course load is il is illustrated in X Y Z, right? So again, one of the things that you need to do, and it's a little tricky in this process, is think about what are the gaps, um, what might they not see, um, given that they don't know my school, right? So you're needing to fill that gap between the college uh, admissions reader and your school. 
if there's something about your school where they put a strong emphasis on the liberal arts or on um stem and you took advantage of some kind of a program at your high school that's also worth mentioning in the additional statement so some schools have like an engineering design program or a social justice program and if you've if you've participated in that then you want to make that clear that i was a part of the social justice program um and as a result you know, I gained this kind of an education or this kind of, I learned this kind of a philosophy or whatever it might be. <laughs> so keep these great questions coming, everybody. I want you to think as well um, about, um, you know, things that might not be clear to a college admissions reader that define your particular school and, and just ask the questions. We'd rather that you ask the questions and miss out on the opportunity. Um, and then some schools have like a computer science track or a business track. Um, some schools do a lot of hands-on learning. So you might want to emphasize that. Again, you're just putting a couple sentences into an additional statement. You make them really power packed, like those activity statements, but um, you don't, you know, you don't want to give too much information, but you want to give enough information so that they understand your transcript, your performance, whatever it is. Okay, any other questions? Yes, if a GPA on the transcript has three decimal digits, do we round it up, down, what should we do? Yeah, round it up. And so in other words, if it's six, five, six, um, or six, six, three, six, five, six, it should be three, six, six. Anything else? Okay, let's dive into the fun stuff. So see how I have all these things, all these green marks? Um, I believe you may need to have these green marks all checked off. Um, we'll see, you may not. It's, uh, I think last year you had to have them checked off, but it, a few things are different this year. So we're going to take a look at the New York University application because it's one of the most complicated ones out there. And so it kind of encompasses all of the different things that you can expect to see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open this. Uh, the first thing I want you to pay attention to is this college information page. Um, this is a great a resource. It's got the information for admissions. It's got the college website, the admissions offsite. You can do a virtual tour. It gives you all of the information which we've included on your supplement docs about the um, the deadlines, and then it might have something about financial aid or honors or special programs like applying to NYU, Steinhardt or Tisch. They wanna see a portfolio for certain majors. Um, they've also started including a bit of information about their philosophy or their global programs. So NYU has something here about having satellite campuses in Abu Dhabi, in Shanghai. Um, and then they're also telling you here that you'll be required to provide your self-reported record. And that's basically the courses and, and grades section, um, unless they've added something additional here I didn't see. And then here, NYU requires one letter of recommendation. Um, you'll see uh, the type listed at zero and one to two accepted. So this is the most important thing is that one to two accepted. So here it says two optional, right? So they will look at two and then another evaluation, they will look at one. And then they're going to get your school report from your counselor and your final report comes at the end of the year. That's to say that you've graduated and they get your transcript. Okay, so lots of good information on this college info page. If you need to you know, get to the website quickly or give them a call, send them an email, you've got the information there. We're gonna go into the FERPA and recommenders next. So everybody should click on this. And basically you may or may not be seeing all of this information that I'm showing you right now. Um, it might populate once you've completed the FERPA, which we're about to do. 
it might only populate once you go back to high school and your counselor activates your Naviance or Maya or SCORE account. So every high school uses its own backend application to integrate to the Common App. And so sometimes there's a lock and you can't get into the invite recommenders without that being released by your counselor or your counselor will bring you in and complete the section or even potentially complete it for you. So just know if you're not seeing this today, invite recommenders, invite teacher, um, it's nothing to worry about. I want to, you might get this thing about invite parents. Um, and you will if you're applying somewhere ED, potentially. Not all schools will put this, but some will. And you have to invite your parent to read the form stating that you are committing to ED, that you understand it's a financial commitment, and that you can't pull out of it. So you have to invite your parent, and they have to complete that form before you send in your ED application. You've got the counselor ED, all these PDFs in here so that you can see kind of what the counselor might be filling out. This mid-year report has your mid-year transcript and the final report has your final transcript. The school report has your transcript through junior year. Um, there's a counselor recommendation. The counselor might need to sign an ED agreement, basically stating that the counselor understands that you're applying ED. Um, so they're, they've got a lot of um, kind of legal assurances in here that you understand that applying early decision is binding. And that's the same for, um, not the same for early action restrictive because it's early action and you don't have to go if you're admitted. So let's go up to the FERPA. You're going to go ahead and click, I think, a blue button here. It'll say view release information. I've already completed it. So it's saying view, not complete. Um, and what you're going to see here is a legal um, agreement um, statement that basically says that uh, you have to give colleges permission to allow them to provide documents on your behalf, almost like if a medical doctor were going to provide doc documentation on your behalf. So what they're saying is, um, one, you're giving permission for your high school to provide your information and your, your record. And two, you're allowing your teachers to provide letters of recommendation on your behalf and you are not reading them. So that second part is really important. So there's two agreements. One, I allow my high school to provide my, my official record. And two, I will not be reading my letters of recommendation or my counselor letter of recommendation. So this is really important. Colleges might not read your application unless you've waived this. So it's really not optional. Um, so the first thing you're going to do here in, um, is you're going to click, I have read and understood the FERPA release authorization explanation above. So basically I've read it over. I understand what it means or what it is, which I've just explained. And then on this second page, you're stating, um, I am not, um, I acknowledge that every school I have attended may release all requested records and recommendations to college to which I am applying, right? So every school that's on your list is allowed to receive these records. That's basically what you're saying here. So, and then I waive my right to review all recommendations and supporting documents. So what that means is no matter at what point, whether you've been admitted to a school or before, you're waiving your right to see your application, you're waiving your right to read letters of recommendation, you're writing, waiving your right um, to, uh, you know, that you're giving your high school the um, ability to provide your records. So we would say here, you're going to select, I waive my right. And then you would say, I understand that my waiver or no waiver selection above pertains to all colleges to which I apply and that my selections on this page cannot be changed once I sign and click the um, below. So, and then you're gonna print your name, you're gonna type it out, you're gonna put the date and you're going to click save and close. So here I'll put um, Corwin and then we'll just save and close. And then you have to put 
the date, which would be here. I'm just going to go back, but you would put today's date. Um, I've already completed this, so I'm already in, but you're going to put today's date. And, and then when you come back here, you're going to see whatever gets populated. You might see something different than you did before you sign that, or it might be exactly the same. You might not have any of this information. Most likely you don't, unless you filled out the ED application already, you won't see this. So I'll just pause there. Does anybody have any questions? And your school will be going through this with you as well, right? So they'll, they'll, your counselor, when is unclear. So depending on the, how well organized your high school is or when they're having, you know, sort of an overview, which you should definitely attend about how they're going to be handling the applications. You really need to be on top of that because they're going to be asking for forms. They're going to be asking for your college list. They're going to want to meet with you. So you really need to make sure that you stay on, even though you're working with us, that you're staying on top of your high school process. We cannot call the high school and interact with your counselors at all. They just don't allow for it. Um, and you wouldn't want us to do that anyway. So it's really important that you stay on top of that and know that whatever they're telling you is equally important. Um, if there's ever a conflict or they've said something that, you know, that we didn't say or that we didn't, you know, we said something different, you just get in touch with us and we'll discuss that with you. Okay, so that's, um, that's the FERPA. Oh, yeah, Shanley, is there a question? Uh, yes, um, if we could just go over again, just confirm that um, this question is, is it okay if we still read the recommendations if the teacher directly talks to us? You should mark that you are not reading your letters of recommendation, no matter what. So the, the student, the, there are all kinds of things happening. Some teachers are asking students to draft part of the letter um, or parents to write things for the letter. Um, if a teacher sends you the letter, you should really not read it. So, because you need to sign this agreement that says that you will not read your letters of recommendation. As I say, it's murky because some teachers are asking students to write part of that letter, but the letter is supposed to be in total confidentiality for the reason that teachers should be able to speak candidly about students. And if they feel that they need to alert a school about a student, and this very rarely happens, but they have to have the flexibility in, in order to do that. Right. So if you've read the letter, then that gives it less validity. So you're really not supposed to read it. So the way you really want to complete this FERPA is I'm giving I, I'm giving my high school the right to read to submit documents and I am waiving my right to read my letters. Right. Um, so that's really important. Thank you. All right, questions. Let's go through this. So this is um, questions by the New York University. This first part, they just want to make sure you're a freshman. Um, so they'll just say you're currently in high school, uh, you haven't graduated, et cetera, et cetera, because if you have, then you're a transfer student. And you probably won't see this. I haven't seen it on other uh, pages, but NYU has that here. Um, if you are graduating high school in 2024, then you're considered the class of 2028. You'll most likely see I'm applying for the fall of 2024, not I'm applying for the class of 2028. Um, whether you're applying early decision, early action, regular decision, any schools that allow you to apply early action, you should apply to if possible. Um, they are admitting more students from the early pool. We know that. Um, last year, Wisconsin deferred a lot of its early action applicants. So did UMish has historically deferred its early action applicants, but you should still apply early in the event that they give that extra weight in the admissions process. Um, here, New York is asking, do you want to apply to these other programs? So you have the option. And this is a growing trend. You will see this on the Northeastern application as well. So if you are open to that, you can select it. If you do, it's gonna open, create a new application inside. So now you can see that prompted this Abu Dhabi campus, campus application. So I'm gonna go back to New York. Um, 
then we're going to go into um, the campus that you want to attend, right? If you would be willing to go to another campus. So yes, I would be willing to go to Abu Dhabi as a second, um, you know, uh, a kind of like a backup or um, for a semester. So you want to read over these agreements very carefully because it's possible that they will admit you because you are willing to go to Shanghai for a year or to start at Shanghai, right? So, or that if you're not admitted to the NYU campus that you would be willing to go to the Shanghai campus. So you need to think about this very carefully. If you're not willing to go to a satellite campus, you shouldn't put it here. But if you're very eager in being at NYU and you don't care if it's New York, Shanghai, or Abu Dhabi, then you can indicate that. Um, here, they go over in quite great detail the early decision binding agreement that you're about to sign, and they have a link to it. They indicate very clearly that if you are choosing them as early decision, that you are committed um, if you're seeking financial aid, you need not withdraw other applications until you've received notification about financial aid from NYU. So you want to read over these statements very carefully. Every college has, a, you know, they're nuanced. Every college might say something different in here. Um, so if you're trying to decide where to apply ED, you might want to try it out on the, you know, maybe you're toggling between two or three schools. You might want to read this over carefully and see what it entails. Um, then you'll have these options to apply for need-based aid, right? And you need to let them know if, and including NYU scholarships and grants. So you want to check out the link, see what kind of scholarships there are at NYU, and see if you want to apply to any of them. So here it says, yes, I plan on completing the CSS profile, which is a very significant financial review. The FAFSA is pretty basic. You need your W-2. For the CSS profile, they'll be asking if your parents own them their home, what they have in their 401k and investment accounts. It's a full financial audit. Um, the FAFSA is a little bit lighter, but if you're applying for scholarships or you're applying for need-based aid, and need-based aid, you're only applying to it if your parents make under certain thresholds. So in many states and federally, that's below $60,000. It's even below that. In some states, it's like $40,000. Um, so you don't want to state that you're applying for need-based aid and we'll be, I think we'll see that if not on this application on another one, um, you want to make that really clear. No, I am not applying for need-based aid. If you're applying for merit scholarships, you will be by most colleges, they're considering you for merit college scholarships in the process of looking at your application. So you don't need to do much more there unless they say there are these other applicant scholarships. You can go to the financial aid page of every high school on your list. If you go back to that college information, um, they often have a link there to financial aid. So you can see what kind of scholarships are out there that are based on the college. Most of the time they're reviewing you. Again, I'm just repeating this. Most of the time they're reviewing you for merit scholarships and you don't need to apply to addition, those, uh, those scholarships additionally. Um, if they if they want to open that up, they often state it in the common app, but it never hurts to go to the financial aid page and just see what else is available, if anything. Um, okay, so here there's a question about the fee waiver. Um, you qualify for a fee waiver if you're qualifying for free lunch at your school. So it's really a very specific question here. Um, or if your counselor has given you a code to put in here to apply for a fee, fee waiver. Um, and you can see there's drop downs here. Also veterans um, or um, there's an ongoing humanitarian crisis. So if you're here as a refugee. So for most of you, you will not be qualified for a, a waiver fee waiver here. So we're going to move forward. We get into the New York campus. Now we're, this is for the New York campus. It's not for Abu Dhabi or Shanghai, right? So what are the colleges that you want to apply to? There's a bunch of them. 
So you want to choose that carefully because they're going to be potentially the college will be reading your application, not the admissions office. So here I've put College of Letters and Science. You might put, um, you know, College of Engineering or Steinhardt College of Education, Human Resources. Um, and then you need to put the major, your primary academic interest. So for NYU, you're only choosing one major, your primary academic interest. Read this box very carefully. Some colleges allow you to put all the majors you're considering. Um, others have, like USC, a very specific drop down. They list out every single major and they ask you to apply to two. Same with the UCs, they ask you to apply to two and they want you to pick very specific majors inside of specific colleges. So you want to fill this out very carefully. It's possible that you're applying to different majors at different colleges. We've been talking to you about that. Um, so uh, fill this out carefully. We'll be going over it when we review it, but please feel free to send us your questions. And then again, NYU is saying, would you consider you know, alternate options um, if you're not admitted to your first choice? So what would be your backup major basically? And they allow you to go in and kind of look at all the different majors. Um, if you, um, cannot, are not admitted to your first choice program, would you like to be considered for the liberal studies core? Okay. So another option, right? So NYU is the college of options. They've got tons of options on here. Liberal studies core is sort of like a second level study. You basically do a liberal arts focus and then you transfer into the major that you're seeking. You can link here and take a look at it. If NYU is really your top, top school, and let's say your GPA is a little bit low, the fact that New York just dropped to 12% admit rate and you don't want to take a risk, one thing you can do is put down here that, yes, I would be willing to do the liberal studies core, but I highly recommend that you take a hard look at it. If you're a STEM student, this might not appeal to you at all, in which case you probably don't want to indicate it. Um, but if you're thinking of anything in the humanities or social sciences, possibly even business, this might be of interest to you. So you should take a look at it. This is also going to show up on the Northeastern application. You're going to have the opportunity to check, would you like to do, and the Boston application, would you like to study abroad your first semester or your first year? And then on Boston University's application, they ask you if you would like to do general studies, which is a bit like this. It's more you get in, you explore, and then you figure out what you want to major in, and then you apply into your major. So it's not a satellite program. It's on the campus, but it's it's a little like you're moving at a little slower pace. You get to explore more. You're taking your college courses and meeting your university requirements, and then you transfer into the major that you've decided you want to pursue. So it's really a great option. You know, 50 to 75 percent of students change their major when they get to college. Um, sadly, we don't have the most recent data on this. And I wouldn't be surprised if those numbers have gone way down um, because students are planning earlier and earlier and taking courses that are helping them to figure out what they want to do earlier and earlier. But there are a lot of students that don't want to, don't know. And that's perfectly fine. There's no rush. And so if you are undeclared and you want to explore, this is a great option. General studies is a great option going in undeclared to your college is another great option. So, you know, you've got plenty of time um, to explore this these questions if you're still not totally sure what you want to study. And this is something we've been speaking to each of you about um, and that we'll bring up again in the CAP family. If you're still, you know, thinking about this or you have questions about it, please reach out to us now. You're going to be writing these major statements for your supplement essays. And we would rather have this discussion with you before you write those essays rather than after where now you need to write a new statement because you've decided that you'd rather study psychology rather than neuroscience, for example, or that you'd rather go in undeclared um, rather than study philosophy because now we, we really need to rewrite that supplement. So. That's something to be thinking about sooner than later. 
Um, NYU housing, most of you are going to say, I'd like to be on campus. Um, additional programs and scholarships. So here we go, more stuff. These are scholarships. You should really read through them, get a sense of what they're looking for, who they're looking for. This one is for um, indigenous groups that um, occupied New York before it became a city. This one is really, and the, you know, obviously the kids of those, those uh, people. Martin Luther King is very much a social justice uh, scholarship. You want to read through that carefully and make sure that you're qualified for that and that it's the right fit. And then they have these um, scholarships for New York state residents, which you don't qualify for. So you wouldn't include those. So every school um, we've seen more kind of links to scholarships. And so that might be something that you want to do. You might see opportunity to apply to an honors program. If we've seen that in the application on your supplement doc, we've put, please let us know if you're planning to add the scholarship application or the honors application, because that comes with more essays and another application. So it's considered an additional application. So you'll see Felicia? that on the doc. Yes. We've got a question about second majors. Okay, great. Um, so the question is, what if your alternate second major is not in the same college, but a separate NYU college? That's fine. Oh, a separate NYU college. Uh, let's see if they allow you to, that's a great question. Let's go in and take a look here. So it's here, please select any majors below. So it looks like they're allowing you to do any of them. You can see, right? So College of Arts and Science, but if we go down, here's Tandon School of Engineering. So you can put as many as you want, it looks like. Select any majors that are of in, you're interested in. Um, they've got Steinhardt, Tisch. Um, they probably, I probably have Stern in here somewhere. Um, so yeah, that you just get to list them, list them out. Um, most of them will have it only two options. They don't use this sort of like paste them all in or select all of them. They usually have a drop down and you select one for one major and the other for another for another major. And it's linked to a college and it's a major. But the small liberal arts colleges have more this format. They allow you to add as many majors as you're interested in. All right. Any other questions? Super. Um, let's move on. So again, this is the most complex application I could get my hands on. They're not all like this, but you will see all of these things in one way or another in your applications. Um, let's see. Academics. Here we go. You're going. It's test optional. This question came up earlier. This is where you're going to tell the college whether you're going test optional or not, because Maybe for some of your schools, you're going test optional and some of them you're not, depending on what your score is, right? So you get to tell each college, um, be very careful here. Will you be sending us standardized test scores to be considered with your application? The answer is no. Now, they might stay here. Will you be applying test optional? And then the answer is yes, okay? really slow down here because one year we had a student who accidentally selected it said you know most of the time it was sending saying will you be applying test optional and the student put yes and then she didn't notice when it changed and it said will you be sending us standardized she said yes and now the school's expecting to see the scores and you've put something in motion now where you have to call admissions tell them that you made a mistake. They have to hunt down your application and the person who's reviewing it. You don't want to do that. So this is, be very careful here. You, the other reason this is tricky is, as I mentioned earlier, because some colleges are, are offering test blind reading, they're not going to include this on your PDF. So when you get to this, this section, please do it very carefully, right? make sure you're reading it over like we you know it's really easy to read through something or read over something you this is a place where you need to really slow down and then check it again and parents need to check it as well um 
Okay, so here, if you're in a taking a local curriculum that ends in national or international examination, this is often the IB program, so you might be in here. NYU requires the self-reported, right? So here I will obtain a copy and that you will provide the report. So here you're saying yes to anything that applies to you. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, you might, they might, something might open up. So let's just see if we can get it to open up. Yes, I understand that you need a school report and that's what your, again, your counselor is providing. Um, and then, yes, I understand that you need one letter of, not every college is going to do this, okay? But NYU is. So they wanna make sure you know you have to get all these parts of your application together. Um, so then you push continue. And it looks like NYU indeed is collecting. Let's just go and see um, if NYU is listed here. So it says not you. So it could be that NYU is going to send you a request for your courses and that you're going to have to upload them again in their particular software. So that's a little annoying, but it might happen. So that's what it's looking like to me. If we go back here and we look at those questions, they're basically, it's not an option. They're saying, you know, we can't review your application without this. Um, and you need to re you need to provide this report. So it, I, they're going to send that to you, a self-reported academic report. Um, let's go ahead and take a look here what that is. Um, here it is. So you can kind of read about it. When do I submit? You will be able to access through your NYU portal once you've submitted your application, right? So this is the other reason that we start our process very early and you will be applying to your colleges mid-October to make sure that everything goes smoothly. There are no bumps because once the deadline hits, admissions offices are not willing to talk to you about any problems you're having. So, um, you know, basically you'll apply to NYU. You probably want to put it at the top of your list to apply to NYU early. And we'll remind you because you have this additional step where you need to provide your transcript. So this is a new, a new development. Um, Felicia, and, one question yeah. about test optional. Yes. Um, the question is, does test optional mean it wouldn't send AP scores as well? Um, no. So that's, um, well, test blind. So, um, I can't tell you because I've never seen before a statement that they are blocking your AP exam scores. I've only seen UPenn and a few other colleges stating that they will not be showing your SAT or ACT scores. Your AP scores are not required. You should only report the ones that are a four or higher. You don't want to report below a four you are not sending your AP score. So these are not required elements. They do not want to report. Um, you're only self-reporting them on your common app. And if you have any questions about that, you should also reach out to us about that. And just on hello is a great way that any of us can answer those questions. Um, so they, they shouldn't be blocking your APs. The only thing that they might be doing is blocking by going test blind. What they're stating as a school is that we will not have bias towards students that have provided their exam scores or toward their the level of their score. So then they're taking it off the application completely so that there can be no bias. So that's what's going on there. I think that answers the question, but feel free to repost. All right, so we've we've gotten here contact section have you ever applied before um would you like to be uh contacted by the new york university um please provide your phone number here um that's really up to you they might text you um if you want them to be able to reach you immediately, it might not be a bad thing. I don't necessarily see any downsides to this. I've never heard students complaining that they were getting a whole bunch of, um, you know, reminders or things like that or nudged by NYU. They might text you and say, hey, the deadline's coming up. 
don't forget or something like that. So this is, I don't really have a strong recommendation on this. It's really up to you to decide whether you want them to be able to contact you on your phone or a family member, right? Does it say family member? There's another place where they'll ask you if you would like to include your um, parents' contact information. Do you have any siblings? This is very common at our school. Does anybody, do your parents work for us? Does it, do any of your relatives work for NYU? Um, and then your supplements. So um, each of you has received a supplement essay doc. And um, basically we worked uh, very hard early on in the week last week to get all of your questions if they were available. So some of the colleges had not posted them yet, like Santa Clara. Um, and we uh, copied and pasted them into your supplement essays doc. And we put them in the order that we want you to answer them. We've put the low hanging fruit first. And the reason for that is that your writing will only get better your clarity of mind will get better. The essays will really be at their prime in late September, right? So we want you to start on the essays that are a little easier or they're less competitive, the application, and arrive at your best schools at the end. The other reason we're doing this is that every year we see students get really hung up and slide into perfectionism on one school, and then they fall behind and they put all their other applications at risk. So we won't let you do this. We're going to push you ahead and make sure you're meeting your deadlines and getting everything in so that, you know, you first of all, you're following a more natural process of putting your best writing into your most competitive applications. Um, and also that you're making sure that you're matching your safety schools and reach schools are also being done and that you're not honing in on your super reach that you're going to ED to because um, otherwise you're just not doing your best work in your other applications. Um, so these are the questions. You're going to be choosing one, you know, and then you'll see this box will open up. It'll tell you the maximum number of words that they'll accept. And we've put that on your document. Um, it's very important that you fill out all of the questions in here. The reason we're having you do this today is to make sure that there aren't any hidden essays. So every once in a while, a student will select a major or select an activity and boom, we have a new essay that we couldn't generate on our own because we didn't have your profile. So, you know, there's going to be time today for you to be filling out these applications. And then additionally, we have it on your SEP doc. And I'll look at that with you in just a moment that you should, you have to check a box that says, I've checked my essay prompts on the Common App to make sure that they're all right, right? So we really need you to do this. The Common App didn't used to do this. And the year, the first year they did, we got up to, I think it was like October 25th and a student put in an activity that she was doing and boom, we had a new essay and we had four days to get it done, right? We don't wanna work like that. It's stressful for everybody. Um, there's no reason to do that. We want you to have time. We want to we want to review your essay. So we don't want to be doing anything last minute. So we're we're telling you that's what happened. So we'd like you to fill out these applications. You're going to need to do them before your CAP meeting anyway. And we're hoping you're going to get most of them done today. So NYU changed their questions. Um, this is why we did not give you questions to work on over the summer. Is it every year colleges are changing their questions this year? tons of colleges change their questions. So even Colorado Boulder, which never used to change its questions. So uh, hasn't changed their question in 10 ever since I've been doing this. So 10, 15 years. Um, so in any event, once your essays are done, you're going to be plugging them in here. Um, and then the final additional information is a bit like the additional information section that we've talked about, but they're asking you very specific questions about gender identity. Um, they're asking you, have you had any help on your preparing your application? This is really for students um, who don't have access. So you don't want to say yes here. You want to say no. Um, otherwise, you're going to be dealing with potential bias in your application um, that you had help. And now they're going to wonder, you know, how much of it is your is you and how much of it is somebody else? Did you actually fill out your application? There are agencies out there that will do everything for you. So you don't want to put in here that you got help. 
Um, there's also a place under the recommender section where you're asked if you have a um, advisor helping you and you don't want to say yes there. So let's just take a quick look. It's here at the bottom. An advisor can be anyone assisting you with your application. Do not invite us. That's very important. Um, and this wouldn't be your counselor at your high school. So again, this is really, it's really directed at students who don't have a lot of support at home, don't have a lot of, can't afford support. They've got a company that is helping them or they've got an advisor at their high school that's helping them. Um, or maybe they're working with us as a pro bono student and then they would add it here, right? Um, but you don't want to add it if you've been paying for the service. It will potentially trigger bias, right? College admissions officers all know everybody's getting help from somebody, right? So, but I think it's just better to underplay it and they can guess if they want to um, or not. So, um, if you have any questions about that, let us know as well. So I need to look at my notes here and see where we are. We looked at NYU. We've gone through all of that. Let's look at Northeastern a bit here because it's a little bit, they've got some questions that need-based um, question. So are you applying? Nope, not applying for a fee waiver. You're going to say that to all your schools. Your admissions plan, see here, it's different. Preferred start term, this is the most common instead of what class. Yes, you are the class of 2028, but your preferred start term is fall 2024. Um, the whole statement on test optionals, so read it carefully. And most important, read this very carefully. Please indicate whether or not you plan to submit standardized tests. No, I do not want. Yes, I do want my results to be considered, right? So go through that really carefully. Um, academics. Um, get a, these are going to be a little bit different. And then again, so here we go. Do you want to be only on Boston campus or are you willing to go to Oakland? Are you willing to do, they've got a ton of partnerships all over Europe, Madrid, London, um, Paris, Milan. So this is great. If you're thinking about a gap year and you're applying to Northeastern, you might want to think about doing this because it's a great option to have a more low key year abroad. You grow up a lot faster living abroad because you're gonna have to get your groceries. You're gonna have to understand and navigate a city a little bit more than maybe the small town that your college is in or the university college town that you're in. So the first semester abroad or first year abroad options are great in my opinion. Um, here you've got global score, scholars. So first two semesters, so the in first entire year, at two separate NU campuses. So that might be London and Paris, right? Or something like that. And then I'm open to any Northeastern first year program, right? So if you're really Northeastern, it's a school that you really wanna get into, your GPA isn't quite as high. We saw most of the students in the EA uh, group last year that, that included one of these options were admitted under the option, right? So you've got to really be willing to go. The Oakland campus is pretty cool. They've got this whole service um, program where they're focusing on improving and developing Oakland. Um, it's a They've got this Mills program built in. So it's actually kind of interesting. You might want to go take a look at it. Um, but those are the options at Northeastern and everybody asks us about us. We really recommend if Northeastern is really, you really want to be there more than anything, you might consider either going ED or choosing one of these programs and going EA. Uh, major that you're going to be selecting. And then let's see, we've got activities here. You're going to upload your resume. For Northeastern, they're looking to see how they're going to place you in their co-op program. So you've really got to show that you've had business, not business experience, but work experience. And it doesn't have to be paid. It can be something that you volunteered in, but you've been out in the world doing things, working with people, collaborating, being responsible, showing up on time. That's what they're looking for. They don't want to put you in a co-op situation and you don't show up right? Or you're difficult to work with. So your resume shows I've been out in the world working with these people doing these things. You know, I have references, et cetera. 
Um, and then contacts is kind of the same. There's nothing here. Um, I want to see Bowdoin. Um, their questions, they're going to ask for a, um, so how did you learn about Bowdoin a little different? Are you a first generation student? You're only a first generation student if your parents did not get a university or college application, period. If they got a university or college degree outside of the United States, that doesn't make you a first generation student here. It's really about education level. So this is, did your parents go to college or not, right? If they didn't, you're first generation. Um, here's the question I was looking for. Do you intend to pursue need-based financial aid? You should only select this if you can show need, which again means that your family has to make under a threshold. Um, each college articulates what that is, but it's usually pretty low. For the federal aid, it's something like $60,000, $70,000. So it's it's very, very low. Um, and then uh, let's see, there's another piece here. Let's look at Bowdoin because Bowdoin's interesting. Um, they have this, um, well, one, they have a supplemental essay and you're able to do a video as an option, I believe. Let me see where that is. Um, oh no, it's down here under additional application information. So optional video response. So you can put anything in here. Um, so you learn about it, find out what it is. Last year, they actually would send you a prompt and you had to answer on the fly. It, I'm not sure that's what they're doing this year. And then an optional art supplement. So if you sing, if you dance, if you're in theater or you play the violin and you've been doing it for a long time and you have recordings that you can share that are high quality, not on your phone with your parents walking in front of the camera, but high quality high resolution recordings of your performances, not necessarily high resolution, but good resolution. And you want to present that as part of your application, especially to these small liberal arts colleges like the Claremont Colleges, Bowdoin, all the small little liberal arts colleges often take an art supplement. So you'll see that in here. They'll either ask you, are you providing an art supplement or would you like to? And then you say, yes, I understand the arts optional is available to me. Um, and then that might trigger, um, let's go ahead and see if it does. And then any optional uh, information that you wanna put there. And that might, no, it doesn't. So you'll have to, you would need to follow the instructions for Bowdoin about how to go about doing the art supplement. Other schools, it will trigger a portfolio um, right here, and it'll say slide room, and that's where they want you to provide your videos, and they'll walk you through the whole process. You might have an essay to write, so you need to let us know, um, but most of the time, you're just um, uploading your work and putting a descriptive sentence about the work, like one or two sentences. I'm going to just hover there for a moment and see if anybody has any questions, because we went over a ton there. Okay, um, nothing is optional. So if they say optional supplement question, it's not really optional. So if you see optional now there, it might say optional additional information. Have you had a hardship? Um, in that case, if you haven't had a hardship or you don't fit any of the other categories, then you probably don't need to answer it, but you can always ask us. Um, but most of the time, anything that's on your application is not optional. We had a student one year who didn't do her supplement essay because she said it was optional. And then um, when her, you know, she wasn't admitted and then her parent called up and it turned out the advice, the admissions reader who had read over her application said that she hadn't completed the essay, which is messy, right? Because it says it's optional, but it's really not optional. So. Um, if you have any doubt, let us know. Your writing advisor will tell you if we've put the supplement on your doc, you need to answer it. It's not optional, even if it shows optional in your application. Okay, we've talked about um, we've talked about uh, the portfolio. We will be sending out links to Slide Room. 
Um, you are going to do a print and preview. Now, let me just show you how you're going to do this. So let's look at an application that I have completed in entirety. I'm going to go to questions. And here I'm going to go up into um, preview. And you can see the whole thing shows up, right? The general tab, the academics, high school and colleges, citizenship, residency, all of the stuff that I just filled out. This is what you're going to do when you come to create your PDF. You're going to hit print and you're going to have save as a, a PDF. And then you're going to save it on your desktop in a folder. So you'll create a folder that says my applications and you're going to save all of your PDFs in that folder. Then your parents are going to review them. And then you're going, once everything's good and you're all set and you're all happy with the answers, you're going to put those PDFs in an email to us. And you need to do this um, within, you know, ideally 72 hours advance of your meeting, your CAP family meeting, so that we can review everything and come in prepared to that meeting to answer questions, pose questions. If something we want to flag it, we're going to do that in that meeting. So that's really important. So that's how you do that. I'll go over it one more time because that might have been a little fast. You're in here. You're on questions. You'll be able to do this on review and submit later once you've put in all of your questions. And, and it's really easy. I'm going to be sending you a link. Um, the Common App will walk you through the entire video and show you where you pay and everything. It takes two seconds to watch. But basically, you're just clicking on this. You're going to review your application, it's gonna look just like this in preview. It's gonna look like this. And then you're going to click a box at the bottom that says, this looks good. I agree that this is my application and nothing needs to be changed. And then they'll ask you to pay and then you'll submit. So that's how that goes. So again, when we want you to provide these PDFs, you go preview, you get it. You're gonna to go to print down here in the right corner. You're going to save it as a PDF. You're going to put it in a folder. Okay. So let me look at my notes and make sure that I have, oh, something very important. Let's take a look at your supplement docs. And then I want to go over University of Penn. So most of your colleges look like this, right? They've got questions. You poke on the questions. They've got one application. It's got your essays in there. It's got everything in there, right? Some applications have broken it into two sections. So you have the questions and then you have the writing supplements separate. Okay, it's pretty, it's not super rare. I would say one in 15 colleges have this. So you need to make sure you finish this. And then this is where you're going to paste your essay questions under writing. You might have these questions about whether you have a disciplinary um, uh, background, you know, maybe if you have um, were suspended from high school or if you've been into jail, you would have to answer these questions that I have a, no record or I do have a record. And then here's your supplement, where your supplements are going to go. How do you explore the community? At, how will you explore the community at Penn? Um, write a short thank you note to someone you have not yet thanked. Uh, if you wish to submit a resume, do. It, we definitely recommend that you provide your resume. That's why we've asked you to do them. Um, if we tell you that your resume doesn't have enough on it, we'll let you know, but that's pretty rare. Um, and then here, um, again, you'll provide this, you'll submit this part of the application, and then you need to come back and submit this. So there are two parts to submit here. There's the, the application and the writing supplement. Now, when you go to your dashboard and we click on UPenn, oop, go back to dashboard and show more details. Um, it'll say here, common app complete, questions in progress. It'll show you, see, writing app. So they've got the application and then they've got the writing supplement. So both of these are in progress right now. You want them to say complete or submitted. Okay, so let's take a look at, um, let me just see, we've gone through the printing. 
you do not want to submit until we've told you it's ready to submit and your essays say ready to submit, right? So that's on your, your doc. Let's just take a quick look at that at the su supplement doc so that you can see what we've done there. Um, and give me just a second. I think I will have to, let's see if I'm able to just um, put this in the screen. Can somebody, t is that, is the sub doc showing up? Fabulous. Okay. So you recognize this, you saw it in your, you know, most of this, but read over it just to make sure all essays must be final review done by October 1st, right? So you're going to go to school and nobody else will have been working as hard as you. And you're going to say, why are they making me get all these essays done early? The reason for that is because we will be doing a very final review of your application after October 1st, and then telling you, you can go ahead and apply and you'll be applying on the weekends of the 21st. So the weekend before the 26th is the 2021st, and you want to get all your applications in by the 26th so that if there's any problem, you're able to call admissions or you're able to troubleshoot with the Common App and take care of it before the deadline hits. Because once the deadline hits, nobody's going to want to talk to you. You did it to last minute. That's on you. There's nothing we can do, right? So if you do it ahead of time, then we've got time to troubleshoot. So that's why we... We run a tight ship and we're thinking ahead and planning ahead and getting everything done. It's a belt and suspenders approach. Okay, let's see here. So deadlines, just like you did over the summer. Um, we're going to be putting these ASAP. What this means is that as soon as your personal statement is done and your resume is done and we've reviewed your application, you can go ahead and apply. So there are a bunch of schools, you know, schools like Creighton actually have a 1015 admit date. Um, Northeastern, you can go ahead and apply. It doesn't mean you're going to hear right away, um, but you can get your application in early um, and get it out of the way. So we'll put ASAP at the very top if we um, if you have an application like this. You might have an application. Prompts aren't out. You're going to see that in the margins, but we've added it. Um, Boulder, we've, uh, you know, we've got this down here. We'll put EA and most likely we want you, depending on your school list, we're going to have you apply EA and not RD because your chances of admission go up. Same with university of Oregon. You might see it like this. You might see it like this, right? If it's got EA and you don't have any restrictions on applying to state schools early action, then we highly recommend that you do. Um, you've got USC. Um, if you're applying to two colleges, those are two separate applications with two separate essays. So you need to let us know if you're going to be doing that because it adds an additional application. So please let us know. With your safeties and match schools, what we've seen in uh, recent years is that if a college believes that you're not coming because maybe the essay wasn't done so well and you're very high performing, or maybe you don't fit the demographic of students that end up at their school, then they might defer you, they might waitlist you, and they might even reject you. So you can be rejected from your safeties and matches. And this is why we insist that you do some of those with us. And the reason for that is we want to make sure that you're doing them well, that you're not, um, you know, not that you're you're taking them seriously and you're doing them in a way that will get you noticed. Because if it just looks like a copy and paste and that you're not really invested in the school, they're going to know it. So you have to do your safeties and matches with as much enthusiasm. You have to put in the interest and the and the research to show that you care as much about your safeties as you do about your reach and super reach schools. Um, so it's just a very competitive uh, field. They There are now companies out there that are studying the demographics of colleges. So colleges now know who enrolls. They have very clear information on the kinds of students that end up coming. So it's really important that you do the call, that you do it well, you show that you're really interested. Okay. Um, any questions? Yes, Shannon. Yeah. Yes, we have a question here. Um, my school has a statement of intent. Should I complete that essay question? My high school has a, is that for your high school? 
Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think so it's a lot of high schools are going to start letting you know that they're going to, they're going to ask for things from you. So, um, they might be asking for a statement or some short essay. Sometimes they'll give you a 10 page document of questions to answer. You can use the work that you're doing with us. Um, if you write something for them, you can use that material in your essays as well. Maybe you've written something that you really like, so you should bring it to your writing advisor potentially. Um, I'm not sure if that's what it is. There is something called the statement of intent, but that's for the the, the UK colleges. Mm -hmm. so I haven't, I think this might just be something that your high school, your counselor wants you to complete for the counselor. Mm -hmm. But feel yeah. free to keep us posted on that. I haven't heard this one before, so it's new. And, you know, high schools um, are getting a lot more organized around college applications. So it's possible that they're introducing things that they haven't introduced in the past. Okay, so it's now two o'clock. Um, what we'd like you to do, and of course you can take bio breaks, get a snack, whatever you want to do, but we're now going to give you um, an hour to start filling out these applications, an hour and a half. We want you to try to get as many of them done as possible. It should only take you about, not for NYU, obviously, that one would have take, is going to take you longer. So if you have NYU on your list, you might drop it down and do it later because you can see you have a lot to think about. But most of these applications should be quite short. They should only take about five minutes. And you should skip any questions that you're not sure you know the answer to. So yes, you know you're going to have on-campus housing. You know you're starting in the fall 2024. You know you're applying, um, not applying need-based um, aid. Um, you know, there are a bunch of questions that you can answer off the top of your head. And those are the ones we want you to answer. Um, you can hold off on answering the other questions later, but the idea is to get as much of this done as possible right now. So, um, go ahead and take a, a short break and head back. We're here to answer your questions. So the other thing we want you to do and going through your applications, what questions are coming up and go ahead and pose those to us and we'll answer them. Just have a couple of quick clarifying questions here. Sure. Um, so um, just clarifying, we should try to complete all of the uh, Common App application except for the essays right now. You are not adding the essays because they're not written. Um, the essays that you worked on over the summer are mostly for the UCs or they are the kind of starting point. They're the um, nuggets that you're going to use for these applications, right? For your supplement. So nothing has been approved to be pasted into your common app yet. Nothing. So we know that on our end, we might've put final review complete. That doesn't mean ready to submit. The only time you paste anything into your common app is when you see in your documents that something's ready to submit or ready to apply. Right. Um, so yeah, no, don't paste anything in there and you're not adding your recommenders. You really need to do that with your high school. Every high school does this differently. Mm -hmm. So you can fill out the FERPA if you're comfortable doing that and stating that you will share your docs. It's okay. And that you will not read your letters of recommendation. You can wait and do that with your parents if you feel more comfortable, but you want to be answering all those basic questions for each college. And some of you might need to add your colleges still. So that's great. So this is go ahead and do that now. Um, but I would highly recommend that you, you, you know, do as many of those questions as you possibly can um, in the next, we're going to take an hour and then I'll see where you are and we'll um, decide from there. Um, I do have a whole section to go over about the application process that we'll be going over. I'm going to show you a flow chart about how the common app works. So there is a, a final section um, where we'll, um, I'll be going over some other things. So the, for now, we're going to just kind of do a hands-on uh, session for an hour, and then we'll check in with you and see where you are. And we'll be here answering your questions. And you might see the three of us um, go out and turn off our cameras. We'll be back. Um, we'll be taking a, a bio break and getting a snack or something like that too. <laughs> Okay, any questions? Um, yes, uh, to confirm, we are filling out the questions on the My Colleges page. Correct. Yes. 
It's complicated. That's why we had this workshop. But yes, the questions here, let me just show my screen again. Where am I? I'm here. So I'll just get, let's get visual. That's the easiest thing to do. You're going to the My Colleges. We've been in here most of the time. Let's say you're going to pick um, and you're going to select My Questions and you're going to do this, right? So you can see how quickly this goes. Um, use my, so you'll read over this quite carefully. If this is a section where you're not sure, just skip it, right? You don't have to do this or it's going to take you time. You can come back to it, but we definitely will want you to fill this out before you send it to us. Do you intend to proceed need-based aid? No, right? Unless your parents make under a hundred K, um, any interests, right? So you can see I'm almost done. Uh, a third academic interest. Let's put anthropology. This one will have taken me two minutes. Nope, I haven't applied. Contacts, how did you hear about Bates? Alumni conversation, put the name, um, add another contact, no. Would you like to receive texts? Yes, I consent to receive texts. And then family, it's going to say, did any of your, you know, um, are you a first generation student? No. Do you have any siblings applying this year? No. So maybe you have a twin. Have you any relatives ever attended Bates College? No. Right. So now and then you're done. See, that took me two minutes. Now they won't all. Right. So some of these are more complicated as we've seen. So um, if a section, you know, you if you want to read it over and you want to get it done, go ahead and do that. Let's say, you know, you're going to provide your scores. Well, go ahead and read it over. If you're not sure, skip it. All right. Any other questions, Shanley? Uh, just a question here. If you have an early decision, then you, you should select regular for all of the other colleges. You should be. Um, if there's an early action option and your ED school allows you to apply early action, you should apply early action. Most early decision schools allow you to apply early action. Mm -hmm. um, early action restrictive does not. So what they say is you can apply to our school early action, but then you can't apply anywhere else early action. It's restricted only to that college. However, Places like Stanford and, and you need to read their their agreement very clearly allow you to apply to state schools early action. So if you're applying to Stanford early action restrictive, you could also apply to UMish, Boulder and Oregon early action, but you couldn't apply to Northeastern early action because that's a private school. Mm -hmm. So a little complicated. Are all the hands down? Because the other thing people can do is when you're done, you can go ahead and put your hand up and then we'll kind of know where everybody is. Um, Felicia, we did have a question um, about the threshold for submitting test scores. Um, the student asked, what is the threshold we should follow for submitting test scores? Great question. And I think, um, yeah, so... Every college, if you do a search, let me just do a quick demonstration so that everybody can see this. And I'm still sharing, right? Um, you go into Google and you're going to do, um, let's say, Bard College and then freshman uh, data or profile. Um, our students and alumni, and this might not have been the right school to choose, but they give you the ethnic diversity, where they're coming from, and they usually also give you the grades. They're, here we go. Has been test optional, so I didn't choose the right school. Let's do, um, let's do Northeastern. Uh, freshman profile. And basically what you're asking for is what is the profile of the students that were admitted the year prior? 
So now we go in here and it'll give us the mean SAT. I know I just saw that. So let's see where it is. A lot of uh, pages have been taking it off. You can find it on US News, what their range is. Let's see here, student diversity. Let me see, maybe I'll just do a search SAT and see if that comes up. Here we go. It was right up at the top. Mean SAT was a 1484. So you don't want it to be a lot lower than that. Um, most schools, let's see, let's look up. I think Cornell had their ACT and it's interesting that Northeastern only shows the SAT. Um, let's see, Cornell University, um, Freshman profile, class of 2025. Um, let's see here. So percent of schools submitting scores, SAT scores, percent of students submitting ACT, and then it gives you all of the um, the percentile, right? So you really want to go with so it's between a 33 and a 35 right or a 1430 let's see what is it a 1450 and a 1540 so you're looking at these numbers so you want to be in that range you don't want to and ideally you want to be right in the middle um so let's just look up another one um let's say UT Austin freshman profile Oops, you don't want to go with vendors. You always want to go right with the university's state. Um, here it is with their information because it's inconsistent. And let's see if we can find it here. I'm going to do a search for ACT. And that takes me not exactly to what I'm looking for. Let's see here. Do they have it on their page? It's, it, this year, it seems to be coming down. It's not on every page, in which case um, we will need to look into that and see if we can provide it. It was on the, it was definitely on the common data set last year. So I know we have it somewhere, but um, let me just see here. Let's look up another one. Um, NYU freshman profile. Here we go. Um, facts. Here we go. So they they have it right here. Thirteen fifty to fifteen thirty, um, and then middle fifty range for ACT is thirty one to thirty five. So this is how you generally find it, and. Um, the U.S. News also will have the range or the median. So if you do U.S. News, because they collect the common data set and you put Lewis and Clark um, SAT score. <clears throat> Let's see here, academic submissions. must be received by, let's see if they've got it in here, acceptance rate, here you go. So it tells you, again, you're going for the median. So it's 1200 to 1390 right here for the SAT. And then does it have the ACT? It looks like maybe they're not collecting the ACT for all of these considered. They take both tests, so I'm surprised. Um, so yeah. So yeah. Felicia, we have another question about test scores. Mm -hmm. um, do you think we should self-report and not have it directly sent to the college? Um, I highly recommend, we're going to recommend that you send your scores in. And the reason for that, we'd like you to send them in if you have them already by September 1st. And the reason for that is that it alerts the college that you're applying. And if you have a high score that can work in your advantage, they might flag that you're coming. Also, 
I don't want there to be any glitches technically if something we had a student last year, he tried to provide his SAT and it, what he couldn't tell if it had been submitted. And then it wasn't clear on the on the um, profile page either if it had been submitted. So um, it's better to send a score in and make sure that you know they're receiving it. So the the college board will take or the ACT will take responsibility for that and they'll send it in. And the sooner you get it in, the better. So you want to really avoid sending it in close to the admissions date because then they're waiting on the score. Um, if you're providing it. So that's why we're going, you know, in our updates, we're going to say, go ahead and send in your college uh, transcript, go ahead and send in your exam scores. Um, and you can do that sort of in the, you know, ideally in the September through September 15th window, um, and ideally sooner than later. So you can do it any, you can do it any time, really, if you're already set. You can request those transcripts. You can request, request the exam scores now and have them sent. But it's better to do it. There is a charge. I think it's $12. Um, but it's better to know that you ordered them and that they should have gone through. And then you're not worried about whether they've been received. They will tell you on the um, as soon as your application gets in, they'll already have your test scores. So they'll put that they've received your test scores rather than your application goes in and now it shows that your application has arrived, but they haven't yet received your test score. So now you're waiting to be reviewed. So it's better to have whatever you can get in, whatever required documents you can provide to them early. I'd prefer that you do that now, right? Just so that your application arrives and they're getting you into a reader immediately. Um, let's see, any other questions? Okay, how do we, how do I see all the hands? It's on the participants okay. window. Okay. Okay, great. The question that will also come up is what if I'm taking my exam in October? So many of you might be taking it in October to improve the score. Uh, the, they're saying now that they'll have the score updates in two weeks. And I believe that you can have the score sent in immediately. But then if you're not happy with the score, you need to make a decision. So they might be waiting on that score. And then, you, you know, the score has to come in. It has to be put into your folder. So all of that kind of slows down the process a little bit. Um, but that is a judgment call. Of course, if you are if you have improved your exam score in the October exam, or if this is the first time you're taking it, then you, you, know, then you need to provide it. And so you just want to provide it from the test score, or um, you can do both. You can send it in and you can also upload it. So that's another option is just provide it, but also send, send it in early and then provide it again if you want to, if it's an easy upload or you're just self-reporting. You definitely should self-report no matter what, right? Because that's easy. You're just typing it into the application. But I wouldn't let that be the only record. I think it's better to have an official record. Some schools just require it. Um, and then again, it's just, um, it's putting it in, it, putting your file kind of in a complete, early complete state. Mm -hmm. um, Felicia, I have one other question here. Um, this is about um, high school course credits. So we have a question on, um, uh, you know, by graduation, how many high school course credits years will you have in mathematics? Uh, the question is, should I include summer courses as well? In that um, are, these are courses that have been taken at a high school or taken at a college. Um, it's it could be uh, both. I think it's summer courses at a at another college potentially. 
Yeah. So if they don't show up on the transcript, then you, I mean, if you're doing them next summer, I wouldn't put them right. If it's this summer, then you want to put them in the additional statement. And I'm going to go ahead and stop recording because we'll want to pick that up again later. Let me see where I can do that. And then we'll turn it back on later. Um, Recording. Okay, so um, we have, um, I'm going to be sharing with you all a picture of our flow chart. The one thing that I want to say before we get started is that we are communicating any upcoming due dates, any changes that might have occurred in the application process. We're sending you alerts. Now this is the time to book your interviews. Now is the time to send your exam. So it is absolutely critical that you read our emails. I know that you probably are going to get inundated. You're probably already getting emails from colleges and from your high school. And But it's really important. We only send it out once a week. It's the CAP email. It goes out Friday mornings. It might go out on a Saturday once in a while. Um, but mostly we send it out Friday before noon. And it basically just gives you a quick rundown of where you should be, what's due. If anything particular to you is due, we will be reaching out to you by text. So it's also really important that you're responding to our texts on hello um, and that you are um, uh, responding to us. If we don't hear from you, then we'll get in touch with you and your parents via email. If you start to fall behind, we'll be getting in touch with you and your parents via email. But everything's gone incredibly smoothly this year. We've been so happy and so impressed with you all. Um, you're really like putting your all into it and doing great work and getting things done and getting things handed in. So it's been amazing. Um, we will continue to kind of keep you on track. And I know that gets harder when you go back to school. So in any event, uh, let's take a look at the flow chart. Um, this is kind of fun. I've had this little thing for a long time. So um, just to give you an idea, what does this all look like, right? Because it's kind of confusing. You're like filling out this for us and that for, um, you know, your teachers and your high school. So just to give you an idea, this is the common app, right? You've just been filling it out. So now you're super familiar with it. Um, you are working on your application form, which you were filling out today. You're working on your essays. You might have portfolio materials or an art supplement that you're working on that you're going to be uploading. And all of that is going to go in through your um, side of the application, through your account, right? So all of your things, all of your information, your documents go in through your account, you are going to order the delivery of your college transcripts and your exam scores, not your APs, right? You're going to order the delivery of college transcripts and exam scores for SAT or ACT in the coming weeks. Ideally, you wanna do this by September 1st. And again, the reason for this is that you'll have that information in there. Your, your reader will not be waiting to receive it. It will all be official. If there's any problem, you call the SAT or the ACT. Um, there's no worry about it getting lost in some new application. You should go ahead and self-report your scores already on your application, but do send in an official report. We just prefer, even if they say you don't need to, go ahead and send it in. It does cost $12, but it's worth the knowing that when they know you're coming, your application is going to be all ready to go. Um, and, um, and, you know, you, you've actually given them an official report, which you usually have to do anyway, before you enroll, if you've been admitted, um, you may be requesting an outside letter from a boss. If you're applying to Dartmouth, you're, re you're requesting an outside letter from a peer. It's very unusual. Maybe, um, 
somebody that's overseen your volunteer work or knows you very well. So the outside letter, you're going to be requesting that on the Common App, and I'm going to show you where that is. So um, we're going to go back into that um, place on the FERPA. Um, I need to complete my release form, so I'm going to go do that. Oh, wait, what, am I in a new application? I might be. Let's see. Um, okay, let's see here. Let's just go through this. Let me just make sure. Oh, yeah, this is my practice application. Okay, so I acknowledge, I waive my right, I understand, and I'm going to put my name in here and the date which is today. And then you'll see all these things come up. So you will, you should see other recommender. You shouldn't need your high school to activate your backend account with them. You should see that here and you can go ahead and invite your other recommender to write you a letter. Basically what this does, you click on it, you're gonna put the email address relationship, their first and last name and add them and it will generate an email to the person saying this person has requested that you provide a letter of recommendation on their behalf. You'll see it when it gets uploaded. I would do this sooner or later. Sometimes it takes other recommenders longer. Your letters of recommendation have to be in before they read your, your application. So in October, we're going to be asking you if your teachers and, and counselor have not yet uploaded your letters here and your school form, we're going to be asking you to touch base with them and nudge them. Because if your application comes in and your letters are not there, they'll wait possibly for a few days. Many schools state that everything has to be in before your they, you know, before the due due date. So you want to make sure that that's getting done. Um, but they won't wait more than a week and you really don't want them to wait. So, you know, check in, it's a little more awkward. You know, you have to say, Hey, I just want to let you know, I'm applying early to these schools. Um, they'll, I have to have my letters in and uploaded before, uh, my, the deadline. Um, let's go back to that slide. So here, oop. um, so that's the other letter recommendation. Here, we want you to carefully follow all high school instructions about all these. They might have you fill out a form. They might have you have your parents do what they call a brag sheet or a parent sheet. Um, they might have you do a brag sheet. They might have you answer a whole bunch of questions or maybe just a few. They're going to ask for a list of your colleges. They're going to discuss them with you. They're going to recommend that you apply to others. They're going to recommend that you add a bunch of safeties. So just get ready for all of this. This is what will happen with your counselor when you go back to school. Letters of recommendation, your counselor and teachers will upload that to their account through the Common App. So you don't see this. This is through their account. Teachers have an account. Counselors have an account. They upload your letters. They go in through the back end. The only thing you're going to see is that it's been uploaded. High school transcripts, you need to listen up at your high school and find out if they will, how they're doing it. So every high school does it a little differently. Um, some do it through parchment. Some do it themselves. Some do it through Naviant, Score, Maya, whatever back end platform they're using. So you need to pay attention to this. If you are applying early to um, high profile schools like Duke, like the Ivies, they often want to see your quarter report. Public high schools generally won't do this. It's a nightmare for them. It's another document that they have to process. So you're going to have to find out whether they'll do it. I think last year, Pally said that they would do it as soon as you showed them proof that this was actually required for the application. Um, so that'll be something that we'll kind of bring you up to speed on, but some schools might want to see that quarter report. Private schools in general have no problem with this. They only have a very small group of students, but public high schools generally, it's really a lot of extra work for them. So don't be surprised if they say, I'm sorry, I won't do that. And you need to contact the, high, the, the college. It's a great thing to get in touch with them about and just let them know, or it can be in your additional statement. I am very sorry, I won't be able to provide a quarter report of my grades, um, my high school, you know, it's 
uh, it's not permitted at my high school, something to that extent. So I just want to bring that up. Usually they just want to see the transcript at the end of the year. They want to see the mid report. Large universities are not going to be asking for this quarter report. They can't, they don't even ask for transcripts often. So like UCs don't ask for transcripts, UCs and CSUs, we're going to look at that right now. Most um, state schools are asking you to self-report your transcript, as you'll see. Um, so you won't need to provide them with a transcript. You will need to provide them potentially with a midterm report. So that'll be your January transcript, not the UC. So not everybody collects it. So let's just take a look at UC. And the UC is a lot like um, the other state schools are a lot like the UC. So UC and state applications, same thing. You're going in through a portal. It's going to be the UC apply or the CSU apply. You're, you have your account and you're doing your application form. You're providing your essays. No essays for the CSU. So I can add that in right now. No essays for CSUs. Um, no letters. This, you can't provide any of this to the UCs or the CSUs. Um, some it, some state schools might allow for it, but mostly they don't. No letters of rec, no portfolios, final transcript to be sent after you've been admitted and you're planning to enroll. So that's how that goes. You don't need to worry about it. All you need to do for the UC and CSU is apply. And then you might be asked for an extra essay or a letter of recommendation so once your applications are in, you need to keep your eyes on your email on a regular basis. I would say daily, if not every other day, it's a bit of a pain, but you don't want to miss a communication because you let your email pile up. Um, so that's going to be really important on the other side. I'll stop here and see if anybody has any questions about either of these things. I don't have any questions in the Q&A. Okay, cool. So you'll be getting a link to this so you can look at it. You can show it with your parents. Um, again, the college transcripts and exam scores, they go directly to colleges. They don't go into the Common App. Um, that kind of gives you a general idea of what is going on. Um, so next steps. Um, you need to decide if you're going to go test optional or you're going to provide your exam scores. That might not be the same decision for all of your schools. You might be saying, I'm sending my scores here, but not there. Um, I'm going test optional across all schools, except for these two, right? So you, you want to start, many of you have already made that decision, but now I'll be sending you the link. So you could, Compass is very reliable, so I trust them. Um, they keep their data up. I'm sure that that data that they've collected comes from the common data set. So um, you can use the reason that US News isn't using ACT, they don't report ACT is because they're in cahoots with common college board. So I find that really interesting. Um, in any event, they um, you want to check that report. It shows the SAT right next to let's just take a look at it again. Um, but you want to use their um, grid to um, disguise, decide, am I sharing right now? No, I'm not. And here, no. let me go back into sharing. Um, here we go. So you want to, it says right here, right? 25 to 75th and ACT 25. So you really want it to be like MIT is 34 to 36. Um, MIT, I think they want something even, let's see if these links are working and see what they provide. But I think for exam scores, they're often looking for something higher than that. So let's look at their test scores here. Um, let's see here if they have their information. I know somewhere very competitive scores. Here we go. So um, those are for the TOEFL and English. Where did they have their SAT? I know last year it was, they might've taken this down. It seems this year that they're taking down a lot of their information about their exam scores. But last year it was something like most students had, a admitted students had a 1580 or above, and it might be in here. Um, let's see if they are providing it. Here we go. So 
Yeah, you can see the range is 34 to 36 um, for MIT. Um, so the other thing that I would do here is actually use their links. So click through, it looks like they, they have them, but the information for MIT was accurate, 34 to 36 on the ACT. Let's go back and see what it says for um, reporting scores. Let's see, here it is, admission stats. Uh, it is, if I can do this quickly, 14, 15, uh, 20, right? Yeah, so it's a little low, but um, only by 10 points. So, um, and that's MIT. So I think you're in good shape using the um, the compass, um, mm -hmm. but I would click through on the, the links here that they've provided and see if you can find it on the website, but they are taking this information this year. I've never seen this before, but they are um, starting to take the information off and not include it. So um, let's see, what else do we want to go over? I have a um, couple of questions here that came oh, okay, in. Okay, sure, sure. Yes, please. Um, okay, so uh, would the Dartmouth peer recommendation be under other recommender? They might have a place in the Dartmouth application to provide that, or they might give you the instructions to send it in. Uh, so I would follow the instructions on their website. And I think we've been sending that out to everybody, but let's look it up. Um, peer letter. I don't, you, I mean, they might be okay with it going through there, but I would, you always want to follow their instructions, especially state schools. So you all are going to see that the state schools are going to say, we won't read your common app personal statement. You need to paste it here, right? So we'll be giving you really clear instructions about this, but I just want to flag that as well. You always want to do whatever they're telling you, because if you don't, and if your application doesn't look right, and you kept that personal statement in the personal statement section, and you didn't paste it where they asked you to, they're not going to read you. They're going to say your application's incomplete. So it's really important to follow instructions. Um, let me see what they say here. Um, well, I'll provide this link and we can go through it. I don't want to hold everybody up on this one, but um, I'm sure that they give you instructions on uh, where to, to provide that. And at the very least, you mail it into admissions at Dartmouth. So um, this is the only school that I know of that does this. So let's see. Um, any other questions? Uh, yes, I think this question is about um, the other recommender. So because that, um, if you're if you're using that uh, reference, um, and it comes a little later, is it a risk because it's being reviewed later? Is that the question? Let me see if I'm getting this question correct. It, is it a risk because the letter is being read later? Is that the question? Yeah, if requesting an outside letter separate from the school recommenders, and that one is later. Does that also delay the review? Thus, is it a risk if asking for an external recommender? Okay, great question. So let me just walk you all through how this will happen. So your application will come through. It's going to be, you know, digital. And somebody is going to be assigned to reading your application. And they will likely go home and they open up a portal and they have a list of students' applications that they're going through. If they have their applicate your application and it says it's ready, meaning it's got your exam scores and your letters of recommendation, but your other letter isn't there, they might go ahead and read it because they don't know. Maybe they don't know that the other letter is pending or it's coming and maybe they can't, you know, they're thinking even if they can see that there's an other lender that's been requested, they don't know when it's going to come in. So they're going to go ahead and read you and then there's a very good possibility that your other letter will not be read. So this is another reason, like the more you can get done now, like getting these people to write their letters of recommendation and upload them, then the less stress you're going to have in October and November, wondering if your letter got in, if it got read, you know, because maybe that letter is super important. You know, maybe it's like, somebody that just knows you incredibly well and is going to make you really stand out or maybe you worked with somebody and that person is important right and then in the world of science or whatever it might be so 
you want to have as much already ready to process before and to read before the, the, the deadline. So they really like everything is really due on the deadline. And if you're waiting, you're waiting. So the two places you don't want to be is waiting or question. So that's the other thing. If they have a question about your application because something's missing or you've made a comment and they're not quite sure how to interpret it, and we'll be reading your additional statement, so we'll make sure nothing is unclear. But let's just say that a student, um, I had a student once and he wrote a statement about um, his grades and how they had dropped and his counselor helped him uh, at his high school, helped him kind of write and add something. And it, for some reason, caused confusion. And the admissions officers were then trying to call the counselor who wasn't available. And so then a lot of time went by and the student is sitting in the questions pile. You don't want to land in the questions pile because getting hold of a high school counselor is very difficult and these people that are reading your applications are are slammed. They're reading tons and tons of applications. So um, that's I kind of went a little bit off roading here, but that's kind of gives you an idea a bit and why it's important to get as many of these materials together now. Now that your application is live, now that you can ask for them. Part of the reason that we're doing all of this now is like we want everything to be ready so that when you go to apply, nothing is pending. Ideally, now you can't control your high school counselor or the teachers, and the teachers are under tremendous press pressure. They're writing a lot of letters. It's hard on them. Um, you want to be kind, bring gifts. I mean, they don't get paid for this extra work, so really be kind to them. And at the same time, you will need to let them know, you know, my deadline is coming up on November 1st. Don't be demanding, you know, understand that they're working like crazy, be as kind and caring as you can. Again, bring them, you know, oh, maybe you shouldn't bring them a gift until after actually, because that is potentially supposed to be, uh, could be compromising, but just be very kind in your communications with them and um, really grateful because it's a ton of work. It's a ton of work. Okay, um, any other questions? Okay, so you're gonna look up your exams, you're gonna make decisions, you're gonna ask us questions about that. We're gonna get that all um, kind of pulling, pull that together. Um, you are going to prepare for your CAP family meeting too. So in this meeting, you need to update your resume. Um, you're going to go through that process I showed you of clicking on the preview button creating a PDF, you're going to put all of your PDFs in a single folder, and then you're going to drag all of those PDFs. Please drag them. Don't put the folder because the folder kind of makes it harder for us to get to them. So just select all from the folder and drag them into the email with your resume. Um, if you're doing an art supplement or you've got a portfolio or there's anything else, a research paper or a business or anything else that you wanna highlight, please put it in there with those um, PDFs and your resume. You're sending that to us, we're reviewing it all. Um, and then we'll be uh, you know, bringing our questions and our, re our recommended changes to the meeting, if any. Um, we will be looking at your major. We've been discussing this over and over with many of you. For some of you that are applying to impacted majors, we've been talking about strategy, so that's very important. Um, if you're not sure if you should provide an art supplement, please be in touch with us. Um, you need to understand these supplements go out to the music department, the theater department, the, the dance department, the design department. They don't stay in admissions. So um, you want to make sure that you understand what is the breadth of these, um, the music department and does the genre that you work in, is it actually represented in the department? Because you could be doing a lot of work for yourself and then they can't necessarily evaluate your work. So if you're working in a genre that is not represented at the school, it's not clear that all of the extra work to put together you know, high quality videos and all of that is worth your time. So that's something that if you're thinking of an art supplement, art supplement is basically, I'm not planning to do art, but I am a practicing artist and I would like to, or musician or whatever. And I would like to include those materials or I have a research paper or 
I've um, I've got makers projects or whatever that I want to include in my application. It should be very high quality, um, something that you've put a lot of time into. The materials should be, you know, kind of curated and carefully collected, and we'll be we'll be looking those over as well. So, and Felicia, yeah, what email should they send all oh, these documents you. to? <laughs> They, all of this is going to be sent, and you'll be getting this in an email as well, but I'll go ahead and post this in our chat. And everything that's a doc, you know, unless we say send it to your CC, we're usually saying send it to docs. Um, and that's, um, we work as a team. So um, if we have any questions, it allows a couple of us to take a look and say, hey, how are you reading this? What do you think about that? Um, can you look at this student's application? I have some questions. So um, everything goes to docs and then we basically will upload everything into our tracking system on you um, and we'll have that family to meeting with you and your parents, which you, um, I believe most of you have booked. If you have not booked your appointment, um, today is a good time to do that. I believe, um, yeah, either Shanley or Kate, if you want to drop your um, Calendly booking in there, students can go ahead and book. Um Everyone now has a supplement essays doc. If anything, you find something is missing. We are not including short answer questions that only require like 25 words. Um, that's not something that needs to be highly curated. It should be in your own voice. The ideas should be yours. Um, we don't want you to be, we really want you to kind of do that authentically and not do it in a conversation with a WA. You should sound as much like a teen as possible. If you have any questions about that, let us know, but we will be reviewing those questions as well. We'll see them in your application, so you'll want to fill those out. Um, when you're applying to your colleges, you kind of need to think like this is a romantic letter. You're trying to convince them um, that, to, that you love them, right? That you really, really want to spend time and be with them. And that you have all the qualities that they love as well, right? It, it kind of comes down to something kind of simple like that. Um, so if you think of it as a romantic letter, even for your safeties, even for your matches, right? That you've really got to show them, I know who you are. I know what I'm trying to do here. I want to be with you on your campus, right? So again, it's a bit romantic. Um, but if you meet admissions officers, they're, they're, they have a lot of school pride. They love their school. They love the students that are there. They love the students that want to be there. So you really have to speak to that. Um, a couple things that I'd like to share with you. Um, let's see. We've got Unigo and Niche. So I'm just going to open these up. We I'm I'm know we talk about these all the time. Um, let me just get set up here. Um, get my screen going. Okay. So I believe I'm in the right place here. Let's see. Here we go. Um, okay, good. Yeah, it went through. So let's take a look at niche. So I did Creighton University here so you can see it. Um, and what I love about niche is all the student reviews, you know, about what students love and what they don't love. And then I adore this section of niche because as a prior professor, it gives you really, really good key information about being at this school. So how politically active are students? Are there intellectual conversations, right? And it gives you the percentage. Do you feel safe on campus? What's the sports culture like? Is the arts culture a priority? How accessible are your professors? How important is fraternity sorority life on campus? Do students drink? Do they do drugs? These couldn't be more important. This gives you a very clear picture and you're gonna see all kind of wonkiness here. You're gonna see at some schools, professors are 80% available and at others are gonna be 20% available. Some you're gonna see fraternity sorority life is it's everything, it's gonna be 80%, right? And at other schools, it's gonna be 2% here, right? Or plenty of people are in a sorority. How uh, politically active are people are, everybody encourages uh, people to participate. 
some schools are going to be no there's nothing we won't per, we won't protest right so this is gives you a really strong temperature read of um for the school so i highly recommend that you go through it i have had students come in here and look at this and go oh wow okay m maybe i need to reconsider this school or i need to find out more about it you've got all the lovely uh, you know, ratings from students, and they give you a lot of in input. One star, treat it like you treat Yelp. Some people have a bad experience and they go all out, right? Doesn't mean that the, that the, the product review is very good. It could just be that somebody was really upset. So you need to meet, you need to read more, right? You need to read 10 or something. So this is really great. I also really love niche is a little better. It gives grades to, um, so let's take a look at niche. Here's University of Southern California. Wow, A's across the board, full report card, um, tells you a little bit about different things. Safety B minus, that's interesting. Um, a little more factual stuff, what they're known for, what they're number one in. Um, their admissions rate, blah, blah, blah. You got a lot of stuff there. And then Princeton Review is the as another one. These are all student review sites. That's why I love them is because you're hearing from students and not from people that are studying the colleges. So let's take a look here. This one is for Connecticut College. Um, here we go. Just kind of a description. They're going to give you... Um, plenty of advertisements. Let's get rid of that. Um, but just, you know, stuff about GPA, kind of more uh, basics here. Um, they might have stuff like descriptions about the student body. Um, you can create an account here. They've got a lot of uh, advertisements, which is a little annoying. And I don't see the way out. So I'm just going to close this guy. Okay. So those are some, I mean, I usually, Unigo and Niche are my favorite. Um, Unigo especially, I really, really like that website. Um, I think it gives a lot of insight. So um, that's that. Hard deadlines. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here so that everybody can kind of see this. Um, and we'll be providing this in our CAP emails as well. Um, hard deadlines are September 10th. Um, submit all requests, all documents requested by your high school. So, and the sooner you do this, the better, because your counselor is writing their letter with those materials. So again, if you want to make sure everything's in, in time, get it done as soon as you can in August, September 30th, October 1st on your docs, possibly all essays done. So we can do a final review of everything. You're going to be applying on the weekend of 20 to the 22nd. You might not get all of your applications in, but you're going to start submitting them with the goal of getting them all in by September, October 26th. You can watch this video. It's really good. It has all the different types. Let's just take a quick look at it. Um, it has a whole thing about the whole common app. So any, you know, any section of it that you, it's not, it's not super deep. It doesn't go into the detail we went in today, but it's general. What I'd like you to focus on at this point when you're getting ready to submit is the submit your application. It'll walk you through this really quickly. It's like a two minute video, one minute, um, just so that you know exactly what's gonna happen. Students get really nervous at this point. Um, and so if you watch the video, you'll know exactly what's gonna happen. And um, it'll take you through this and then you'll pay. So I we're gonna include that in our notes. Um, October 26th, we'd like everything submitted so that you have five days to deal with any alerts. Uh, November 8th is the last day to send us your completed UC PDFs. We're going to be telling you that's the last day for us to review them. We want you to start submitting to the UCs um, on November 12th and get that done. The reason that we send November 15th is our last day for anything, meaning we expect you to be done at this point is that school ticks up. It gets very busy. We basically lost touch with students completely at this time over many years. And so we just decided that we were going to make sure students had everything done so that you're not under tremendous stress, so that you're not trying to get things done when you need to focus back on school. Your fall senior grades are really important. Um, so you don't want to be putting them at risk. 
It's also really good that you take a break over Thanksgiving. So November 12th, we're expecting you to apply to the UCs. And at this point, the only thing remaining will be any ED2 applications that you want to send out and possibly any RDs that you want to send out later after you hear back from your EA. But that's it. Everything early action, um, early decision, anything um, early regular decision that also involves a scholarship. So it's kind of an early regular decision. We want you to get that in by November 15th. Um, once you've applied, so this side of the application process is very demanding. You're getting a lot done. You're filling out a lot of things. You all will pretty much be done with the, the most of the work after you get done with these applications, and then you'll have essays to do, but you won't be trying to do the essays, um, you know, without material, you already have material to work with, you're in really, really solid shape to meet the end of September deadline without this being super stressful. Um, so just know that you're, you know, you're really ahead of the game. Um, on the other side of this, it's very emotional. So waiting around for decisions. You might be deferred from both of your early action schools. It's possible. It happened last year. We saw students, you might get deferred from the University of Wisconsin and the University of Michigan. They deferred like crazy last year. So you'll go through this whole emotional cycle on the other end of this, and it's going to be up and down. So the best thing you can do is sort of, you know, really work on the mindset that like it's out of your control. What's going to happen is going to happen once everything's done. Right now, you have control. You should do everything in your power to make your your applications as strong as possible. Don't let it be you that in January, you wish that you'd worked harder when you could and you had everyone's attention and everybody focused on you um, because in January, it's too late. And I, I've seen this before. Students are like, oh, I just wish that I'd tried harder. Well, yeah, in January, it's just too late. It's gone. The application's out. It's in the office. So um, don't, you know, really put, understand, even though you're not feeling that around you, because maybe not everybody's focused on their applications, really, really do your very best job. Um, you will be getting, as we've been seeing, you'll get offers to start in the spring. You'll get offers to start in your sophomore year. You'll get offers to transfer. There's going to be a whole bunch of strange offers. Um, they're trying to admit as many people as they can. They can't admit everyone is an incoming freshman for the fall. So they have these sort of like tiered offers that they might give you. If you applied to go to NU Northeastern, you might be uh, admitted to do your a semester in Oakland, a semester in London. Um, you might get a Trojan transfer, um, which means, I'm sorry, we can't admit you, but if you want to transfer here, we will support you through that process. You might get the Berkeley fall program for first year, meaning that, or first semester, you go, you're in a program um, where it's a lot, a much smaller group of students, and then you transition into the full year. Uh, we, I think we had about three students that were admitted to that program, very high performing students that were admitted to that program. Um, it's new, so we don't know much about it. Um, we do, we're done. So that is everything. Thank you very much for sticking with us for three and a half hours. So it didn't go to six. Um, we kind of uh, hoped it wouldn't. And we know that you will work on these applications on your own. We won't force you all to sit here and finish them, but please do wrap them up, find some time over the next days. We will need them by starting next week. So for many of you, if you have a CAP family meeting with us next week, you need to get it in these applications into us by Friday. Um, and I think that's it. Any questions? I think we have a question here just on uh, clarification around ED2 um, and the time frame, um, how that syncs up with um, what we've just outlined. So the question is, if you yes. apply ED2 to one school, can you also do it within this time frame? Right. So you don't want to apply ED2 before November 15th, because if you get into your ED1 school, then you can't go to your ED2 school, right? So we really recommend that you wait and see. Also, we saw with some students that they changed their mind and they actually 
um, decided not to ED2. So I would just, once you get all of those results in November, it's better to just at that point decide what your strategy will be. Most students, they have at least one or two ED2 options um, and they, you know, they wait to hear from their ED1 and then they apply to the ED2 if they really feel like they don't want to take a risk that they won't be admitted in the regular decision pool for their ED1 school. So think about that. I would say it's a good idea to choose a couple ED2 schools and to leave them on the side. Um, if one of your ED2 schools, however, has early action, then you have to decide um, you have to, you know, like Northeastern has ED2 and they have early action. They admit quite a few students in their ED pool. So you might, if Northeastern is really one of your top schools, you might select it as an ED2. So, and I know this is all a little, if you're hearing it for the first time, a little confusing. So feel free to reach out to us. But basically you have your ED1, which is like what I want, most want to get to. If I don't get into there, I'd be, I'd like to ED2 to these other schools, right? Just to make sure that I, I give my best shot at getting into some of the more tougher schools to get into perhaps. Um, I'm going to put a form. We would love your feedback on um, how uh, useful was this uh, workshop today. Um, let me just go ahead and grab it. We really appreciated you doing this last time. We got a, just a ton of really good feedback. It's fast. Um, it helps us improve. Also, um, if you have any um, questions or you had trouble with something, of course, we're here. We're going to be here for the next few months. Um, and we'll be checking in with you via text just to see how you're doing, how things are coming along. And we'll be sending in our regular emails. We'll be meeting with you. If you ever need a meeting with us, you should reach out to your CC. We'd jump, get, send you our calendar link. Um, let us know if things, for any reason, things are not going smoothly with your WA. We want to know. Um, so far, we've been checking in with all of you and everything seems to be going smoothly. But um, please do communicate with us if you have um, any questions or, um, you know, there's anything regarding that uh, relationship that you want to discuss with us. We're also here for that. So I think that is it. Um, unless there's any last questions and I will go ahead and stop there and I will go ahead and stop the recording as well.